I got the dad rector's cut. What? You're leaving now? Okay. You can say if you want, but okay. Bye. New game, let's go. Dad. Dad, wake up! Uh, five more minutes. I said that five minutes ago, and also ten minutes ago. I finally opened my eyes and sit up, lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a box. I yawn and stretch. Morning, Manda Panda. Yikes! Dad, breath. Go brush your teeth. Drinking too much water can cause water intoxication. Build that dad. Build that dad. I am fucked. I'm like, I'm like this one. Um, head. I'll go with this one. Hair. Ah. Uh, Go with... Uh, yay, Dream Daddy! Yeah, we're building my dad right now. Um, wait. Was there any weird skin colors? No. Go to Halos. I can't be blue? How dare they. Um, I'll do this one. I'll do this color. Eyes. Room run let's do <laughs> that one's probably closest yeah i like this one uh noses got a little nose <laughs> There we go. Coral blue. Like. <laughs> sure, sure. Thick eyebrows. Let's go. Sorry, I didn't think the game was loud enough, so I turned it up a little bit. Uh, facial hair. Mustache. If I was a dude, I'd definitely rock this facial hair. Mm, do I want glasses? Sure. Mm, oh no, I cannot fear change. Is that too much red? <laughs> I think we'll go with this one. Looking good, Gary. Obviously, I'm a Laura Toodles. I'm gonna be that dad. Be that dad. You can hear the music now? Good. Good, good. Huh. Did you fall asleep packing? Got most of it done, I think. 
searching around the room. It looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. Wait, straggler. Huh? What's in it? Looking into the box, I see a bunch of old photos and little photo albums. <laughs> Whoa, I haven't seen those in years. I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we begin looking through it. It's one of the coolest babies I've ever seen. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, we'll just go with Father. The only way your father and I could get you to stop crying was put the sunglasses on you. But whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with sunglasses on. Nice. Halloween when you were maybe four? <laughs> oh my god, that dragon costume. You couldn't decide between being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Princess dragon. Hmm. Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Putting yourself inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. Hmm? <laughs> right, yep, definitely replace that memory. This is you in your horse phase. Hmm. Yeah. I believe you named that flesh horse Sir Horsington the Brave. Uh. I don't think that was his Amanda lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold it above her head with my superior dad arms. Nice try. Put this important blackmail for later down the road. Go ahead and try me. I've seen the pictures of you and your ska band. Ouch, kid. Huh. The ska munition manifesto. <laughs> Had a chance back in the day. Look off into the distance and reminisce about that rad horn section. Hey, it's Emma P. Ugh. No, Dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. Hey, I promise you wholeheartedly that I will never stop mixing those two up. Ugh. Dad, Emma R has been my best friend since I was seven. Give it like a little bit of effort. <laughs> All right, Emma P was the one who. Uh Oh god. Which one should I pick? I think I might do try to steal people's pets? I don't know. I'll wait like a minute and if nobody responds then I'll just choose myself. Man, I remember when Game Grumps were working on this. Flaming tennis ball? Okay. Lighter fluid, tennis ball, tennis racket, right? Dad, that was you. Oh, right, I was a wild child. I was six when you did it. <laughs> okay, Amanda, I wasn't aiming for the police station, it just happened that there was a police station in the vicinity of where I wanted to hit a flaming tennis ball. Ugh. Yeah, I remember explaining that to the police. They didn't blame me either. Oh. Anyway, I gotta show this to Emma R later. She'll get a kick out of it. The first photography award you ever won. Yeah, and I got us a $20 gift card to McFridays. Alright! Then you get food poisoning from the cheesy toast uh, blast. I think you mean food poisoning, you know, with a Z. Ah. <sighs> Still can't drive past McFridays without gagging. Still proud of you, though. I managed to reach as deep down into the box and pulled out one last photo. Neither of us say a word. We just stare at the photo for a long moment. Uh. I finally decided to break the silence. It was the day we adopted you. It's kind of a funny story. The day we brought you home, we got into a car accident. It wasn't anything big, just a little fender bender in the parking lot. But of course, I was freaking out. The little lady who crashed into us was freaking out, and I didn't know what to do. But your father, oh man. He holds my hand and looks directly in my eyes, the calmest I've ever seen him, and he says, It's okay. It's all gonna be okay. Uh. He was right, you know. I stare at the picture for longer, maybe too long. I miss him. 
Can't even imagine what it must be like for Amanda. She pats me on the back. Come on, Pops. We gotta finish packing. The moving van won't wait forever. You're right. Amanda and I pile into the car and take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your father and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. Aww. Hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? You always had very strong arms. Ah. Hey, remember when I shattered the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? You were a very imaginative child. Yeah. Hey, remember when I booked the back window? <laughs> we get it, Amanda. <laughs> you break stuff. Ah. There'll, plenty, there'll be plenty of more stuff for me to break in the new place. Memories to make and stuff to break. Huh. You ready? We sit in silence for a moment as I watch my daughter grow up in this house. It will forever hold a place in my heart. But it stings a little to leave behind. I'm ready. The moving van begins to pull away. I get in the car into position to follow it. I watch our house, our old house, disappear in the rear view mirror. Oh. So what? Mm -hmm. So sell me on our new cool pad. I clear my throat and do my best cheesy announcer voice. Nestled in beautiful scenic downtown Maple Bay, our new house feature... Uh... Multiple places to sleep. Not only are there three bedrooms for your sleeping pleasure, but couches and fork space where you can, yes, catch a wink. What a deal! I mean, if I sleep, it weren't for the week. You sleep more than anyone I know. Hmm. I admit my faults, Pops. I keep it real. Anyway, it's also smaller than our last ah. house. Cozier, one might argue. Good spin. Hey! I think it's great. We won't be, we won't be closer to a lot of cool stuff that we can walk to. Though I don't have to waste gas, and I mean trying to park downtown is, you know. Amanda, you know you're gonna have to learn how to pedal a park at some point, right? Mm -hmm. No, because even I don't know how to do that. <laughs> If you don't go to a city, you'll be fine, you know, as long as there's like private parking or parking spots and stuff. Nah, you don't need to learn how to pay a park. What? I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on their attitude. Huh. I don't know how to do that either. Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet. The neighborhood seems pretty quiet. Huh? You don't have to chase any rowdy teens off your lawn. You are the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. Huh. I'm in the last year of high school. I'm practically dust. Yeah, you're a real... Oh. Oh, don't you dare. Senior. Hmm. Said I know where this is going. Citizen. Hmm. I'm just gonna ignore that. Eh? But I won't forget it. What's item number one to do on the new house agenda? Well, first, we'll need to forge a pass through the solid wall of boxes that is now blocking the living room. I still have to install the washer and dryer we need to do grocery shopping. Huh? Pop school your jokes. You have to promise me that we're going to take a break and explore the neighborhood. Okay, okay, you're right. We'll get some work done and then check the area. We pull up to the new house and step outside. The only time you had to parallel park was for your driving test. Same! And then I went to that city and there was no parking ever. You like had to let parallel park? I would literally drive around the block a couple times until I could find a spot that was like on the end or something. Because I could not, I did not know how to parallel park. And I did not want to block traffic for like five minutes while I tried to figure out how to parallel park. It's the worst. I like small town USA where you have a parking lot or your own driveway or whatever. Because screw that. Or if you can live in a city, pay for a fucking parking lot near your house, because I swear it's so much better. We pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mowed, and the for sale sign still in the yard. yeah. And with a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign was no more. Nice form, sweet pea. Ha! I've got a problem with authority! I'm so proud. Oh. Man, all that karate chopping tuckered me out. I could really go for a sandwich. An ice cream sandwich. Wait, it's 10 a.m. Um, we'll go with... 
Which one? Which one should we go with? The, we need to unpack first. I need some coffee ASAP. Or did you see all the dogs in the park nearby? We think. Doggos? A key. You know what? Thank you for moving us to an area where the dog to person ratio is very high. Only one's best for you. Only one what's best for you. I hope you're prepared for the frequency at which I interrupt conversations to yell dog to rock it way up. I mean, you do that a lot already. Yeah. Hey, it's a dog. Oh no. Wait, false alarm. It was a funny shaped rock. You wanna feel- you wanna see real dogs so bad? Let's go to that park around the corner. Gas is cheaper in the suburbs. Okay. Or did it say gas is cheaper than the suburbs? Oh shit, you're still alive? Hello. Well, technically, I ended stream for like two and a half hours and then I came back, so I did take a break. Also, hi again. We're playing Dream Daddy. I just started this, like, 18 minutes ago. Amanda and I begin to stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe how beautiful it is outside. Kids are playing in the streets with flowers in bloom, and a faint smell of nearby barbecue drifts through the air. I was gonna say, yeah. This place is nice. Hmm. Too nice. I don't trust it. Good eye, honey. You can never be too careful. See that baby in the stroller over there? Government operative. Hmm. We're on to you, baby. Huh. Let's take care of the pets, baby. I'll still be here when you come back. Have fun, be safe, blah, blah, blah. We walk for a while and eventually end up at a small park. Toddlers chase each other through the playground and dogs of all shapes and sizes romp through the grass. It's pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice empty bench and we start to make our way over to it when... Heads up! Oh, the frisbee suddenly hits me in the face. Woof. <laughs> Dog noise. Boof, boof. <laughs> corgi with a neat plaid handkerchief. Hand what the fuck? Okay, a corgi with a neat plaid handkerchief tied around its neck bounds up to me, wagging its tail. Should I say hello? Do you know how to... Did you throw this thing at my head or I like your necktie? I'm gonna give you like a minute to respond if nobody responds and I'll choose my own. Which one do you want, chat? Anybody. Can I pet the dog? I wanna pet the dog. Oh my god, I can't pet the dog. Yep. If nobody responds, then I choose my own. But... Yep. Wait, what do I do? You can choose hello? Did you throw this thing at my head? Or I like your necktie? Those are the options currently. So we just got a frisbee thrown at our face and then this doggy ran up to us. And these are the options he gave us. It's like a- it's a story game. A gay story game. <laughs> Alright, did you throw this thing at my head? Fuck. <laughs> he runs around in circles and nudges my leg with his nose. Oh god, this is the cutest dog. Oh, oh, we got another question. Can I help you? Impart upon me your wisdom, tiny dog, or pet the dog? <laughs> oh, I mean, all he said was bark, so... Yeah, the best story game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pet the dog, why not? We pet the dog. But where do we pet the dog? Give him those head rubs. We need some chin scratches in here, or 
dare we try the butt pats? <laughs> Where would you like to pet the dog? <laughs> Do we want to give him head rubs, chin scratches? You're gonna start patting his eyeball, are you? <laughs> butt pats, right? Butt pats. I gave him the customary pats. The dog loves this. Good call. Some stranger. You definitely could have caught that. A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us and takes the frisbee from me. Alright, what do you think of this dad? He's ginger. He's He's got some hair going on. He's very tall and burly. <laughs> you know, frisbees are traditionally caught with your hands, not your face. Some dog was up to her and she starts touching him on his eyes. Hey man, I think pets are allowed to just be pets. <laughs> what the fuck are you playing? It's a dream daddy dad dating sim. Alright, so here are our options. Well, you're traditionally not supposed to aim for people's heads. It's a new technique, or I'll catch it with my teeth next time. Those are the options now. I think if I chose on myself, I'd go with like the uh, smart ass remark of I'll catch it with my teeth next time. The first one? Alrighty. I'm fine, thanks. Haha, right. ah, I'm just messing with you. My name's Brian, by the way. I'm Alora, and this is my daughter, Amanda. I looked over at Amanda, only to find her sitting on the ground, rubbing the dog's tummy. <laughs> His name is Brian! Run! <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Your dog's cool. Ah, old Maxwell sure loves the attention. The dog's name is Maxwell. It's great to see another father-daughter out here on such a sunny day. Where's yours? No bitches. No daughter? Brian gestures over to Grassy Knoll, where a girl sits in a checkered blanket. She's reading a book bigger than her head. <laughs> she puts it down and heads over to us. Isn't Maxwell a fucking brand? I have no idea. <laughs> Aw, Daisy's cute. This is Daisy. She's reading the Brothers Karmaram Car. Oh my god. The Brothers Karamazov, her teacher tells me, that she's reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. I'm gonna call my next brand fucking Adidas. Like, what? <laughs> Adidas. Adidas! <laughs> How old is she? Ah. Ten. She's a precocious little youngster. Huh? Whoa. Ah. My natural dad instinct kicks in. I must brag about my child's accomplishments. Oh no, it's happening! Brian, go on, Daisy, and tell him about yourself! Daisy, um, I... Brian, that's my girl! <laughs> Laura, Amanda, get in there! Okay, okay! Laura's HP 80. Brian's HP 80. Alright, we got options. Brag! Item. Daughter. Flee! Brag, daughter, item, flee. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> what do the different ones do? I don't know. I don't. I think if you click on it, it just does something. I don't think you get a, like a. One is bragging about your daughter. The other one is just using your daughter. An item. I don't know what items I have. Or try to run. I don't know. I don't know what they do. Flee? Alright, try to run. Do you really want to flee? Yes or no? <laughs> yes or no? Social situation. <laughs> Are we running from our problems? Social situation. <laughs> yes! Okay. Laura, Amanda, get out of there! Amanda, you don't have to ask me twice. 
Brian. Boy, what are we doing here? Putting our kids on competing pedestals. It's been such a treat getting to know you two, and that's what matters. God, even his cowardice is better than mine. <laughs> so, I take it you guys are new to the neighborhood. We just moved in. Do you live around here? Oh. Yeah, we live in that cul-de-sac down next to the coffee shop. <laughs> what a coincidence. That's where we live, too. Small world, yeah. Daisy and I are in that little ranch-style house on the corner. I know that house. It's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscape. Does this guy have to outdo me at everything? You don't like Brian? He's dodgy? Yeah, it seems like he's like a, a little bit of a narc. I don't know. What a lovely place! <laughs> well, I don't even want to take up any more of your time. Really nice meeting you guys. You'll have to stop by at some point. Yeah, definitely. Bye! Brian and Daisy walk further into the park with Maxwell happily trotting along in tow. You get the feeling that he was trying to one-up us? Huh? Trying and succeeding. I can't believe that kid's only 10. What was I even doing at her age? Uh, I believe you had a bit of a thing for horses. Shame that didn't pan out. Could have majored in comparative horse studies. Not too late to minor in horse creative writing. Too close to the truth, Dad. Let us never speak of this fantastic adventures of Sir Horsington the Brave in Epic 7 Part by Amanda Doodles. We laugh off the horse epic and walk around the park a bit more, enjoying the day. Alrighty, do we go to the coffee shop, go unpack, or go take a nap? What should we do? Also, I really like the way the background's drawn. It's artistic, but it looks good. You can make it out, you know? Coffee shop! To the coffee shop we go! I gotta get my hands on that nice hot cup of old bean juice, or I'm gonna be useless all day. I think we passed a coffee shop on the way here. Maybe we could check that one out. Let's do it. Tip 54. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't get to read it! It loaded too fast! <laughs> we walked down the street to the coffee spoon. A little cute little place on the corner. Man, this is such a convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, you're fine, Mikes. I like seeing it. What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else to drink coffee on the couch when I could just drink better coffee at home on my own couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? At least when I'm at home, some random guy isn't gonna come up and sit on the recliner next to me and I won't feel like a little weird about it because technically he's not sitting at my table, but he's very much within my personal zone. Hmm? Dad? And what's the etiquette when you tr when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin? Do you set it on the counter because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you leave it there and feel your face flush with hot shame as you consider the possibility that there was in fact a bin somewhere just out of sight and now you're that jerk who left their mug? Aww. Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda. <laughs> we walk inside. Oh. Oh, hello, handsome. <laughs> the inside of the coffee shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Final records line the wall and patrons lounge around the well-worn, well-worn in couches. Some cool tunes spin on the record player next to the little stage. That is me for real. <laughs> hey. I like him, he looks cool. Welcome to the coffee spoon, guys. How's it going? What's with the name? Hey. Oh, it's a uh, kind of dumb. Hmm. It gets mentioned in this poem I like, and I thought it was a good idea at the time. I suppose now it's still a good idea because, like, the business is still running. Hmm. But people ask me that question all the time, and I give them the same answer every time, and now I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking, but man, we're in it, and now I can't stop. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. 
just stared at him. <laughs> so what'll it be? I scan the chalkboard menu and I'm immediately overwhelmed. I'll have a... Uh... Godspeed you black coffee. Iced tea again and Sarah. Or a chai antwood. I think these are all music references. We got the Godspeed You Black Copy, Ice Tegan and Sarah, or the Chai Antwood. <laughs> Who the fuck is Sarah? <laughs> I have no idea. I know Chai Antwood is based off of Die Antwood or D Antwood, and I know Godspeed is a music reference too, so I'm assuming. This is also the last one. All right, spicy. Oh, he liked that. He liked that. <laughs> he liked that. <laughs> I don't get it. Oh, it's a pun. Diant was. Oh, see, I was right. Diant word word is a South African rap group. They're pretty well known for their. Uh, Evocative imagery and hyper stylized music videos. The music is catchy as it is disturbing. Oh. Oh. I'm doing the thing again, hey. but coming right up. Hmm. And for you, I'll have a macchiato de Marco, please. Hey. Coming right up. You want that small, medium, or Biggie Smalls? Uh, medium. <laughs> Wait, is Biggie Smalls big or small? Um. I should change that, shouldn't I? Matt sets to making our drinks and Amanda and I take a seat at one of the couches. I just got that knowledge in it. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> What's this deal? Let the man make his puns. They're cooler brands than you ever listen to anyway. Hey. Hey. Scott was cool once. This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's alright. Good lumbar support. You think right into it. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. Amanda nudges me. This place is right next to our house and that guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable as talking to other people as you are. You should totally become friends with him. Uh, I don't know. Come on, we say that about meeting new people. I can't meet new people if I always stay inside, and also don't go outside, and also don't talk to people. Huh. See? We're making progress. Matt sets our drinks at our table, and I immediately burn the roof of my mouth. Good one. Hey. Hi, we're new in the neighborhood. I'm Amanda, and this is my dad, Alora. Hey. Oh, right on. Pleased to meet you both. Hey. You gotta come by when my daughter's hanging around the shop. You two might get along. I'm sure we'll come in from time to time. Amanda kicks my leg from under the table. Sure, we'll be here a lot. Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> you know what? Let me get your guys' opinion on something. Matt goes in the back and comes out with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. Hey. I've been working on a new banana bed recipe, and I need help coming up with a name for it. Well, I think we're gonna have to taste it first. We can do the full uh, flavor profile, you know? Really appreciate the flavor sensations of uh, Amanda nods vigorously. She knows this game. Yeah, we need to give it the little banana bread a taste if you want us to do it for free creative labor. I think that'd be a commensurate with a. I've taught her well. We've trained for this day. I'm just gonna give you guys free banana bread anyway. All right, yes, that. Matt serves us each a piece. Amanda and I happily chow down. Yes! This is amazing! Oh. Thanks! The secret ingredient is banana. <laughs> We're gonna call it Thinning Out Loud or some other Ed Sheeran song for real. <laughs> but. Hmm. Hmm, I'm stumped. Well, it might not be only to give you dad brand puns, but I'll give it a shot. Alright, so here are the options. Banana bread Kennedy's. Grateful banana bread. Right said banana bread. Those are the options. So I know one of them is the Grateful Dead. I don't know about the banana bread Kennedy's. I don't know what that's a reference to. I also don't know right said banana bread. 
The only one I know is the Grateful Dead. Or in this case, the Grateful Banana Bread. Right said Banana Bread, it rhymes already. He liked that one! Oh my god, Meg! <laughs> like, right said bread. Ah! But now it's about banana bread. I think the youngsters would like it, despite not getting it. What? That actually has a nice ring to it. Good job, Megs. <laughs> really? Hey. Yeah, right side banana bread. Strong decisions. That's our baby. Oh. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool. But once I said it, I realized it doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth. And I maybe should have just leave the saying baby to the professionals. <laughs> Why isn't this easy, IRL? Yeah, apparently you're really good at flirting. <laughs> hey. Hey. Enjoy your coffee! Thanks, baby. Hey. See, it sounded good when you say it. Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet just for a moment. <laughs> That's flirting? What? <laughs> Subtle, yeah. I'm talking about banana bread. <laughs> oh, just because uh, when he threw on like the baby thing and he's trying to impress him with like song names. I don't know, I'd consider it flirting. What do you think of the mysterious stranger looking at us from across the room? Hello, welcome back. I'm glad everybody has been fed and watered. Question mark. I hastily looking away. Hope you didn't catch me staring. Who is that? We finish up our drinks and head out. Hey. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we pull up caffeine, where to? Should we get back to packing? Or should we take a nap? What do you guys think? Packing? Unpacking? Nap. What are we doing? <laughs> so far, we've met a big uh, redhead named Brian. We've met Matt, the coffee guy. We've seen a mysterious stranger from across the room. We got one vote for nap. Let's we'll see if Michi says anything. If not, we're just gonna go for the nap. So we got a couple options. Who wants to unpack for real? I mean, true. Who wants to unpack? All right, we got two votes for nap. Let's go. We just had coffee. Have you ever known me to play by the rules? Your father is a rebel, sweetie. No, <laughs> board the train to Sleepy Time Junction. I can't read these dad tips, they go by too fast. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps come up behind us. Laura, bro! Hey! I turn around, I'm greeted by a familiar face jockeying up to us. Craig? Oh. Bro! Bro! Oh. Holy, wow! I haven't seen Craig in forever. Huh? It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow, you look great. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Who the fuck? I don't know, his name's Craig. Apparently I've known him for a while though. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while too. <laughs> Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello, and hello, cute baby. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Last time I saw you, I think you're about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River googles happily. Are you babysitting? Oh my god, they were roommates. <laughs> oh. Nah, dude, River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers, and next we're both fathers. Where you been, man? Mm -hmm. I was working out in California, just re relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding. Man and I just moved to the side of town. How's Sam Ashley doing? Oh, man. I mean, Ashley. Ashley is her name. Oh. She actually goes by Sam Ashley, and uh, we got divorced last year. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. Nice. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacetic. Twins? You have three kids? Mm -hmm. Ain't life something, bro, right? 
Hague Stan Craig is a father of three. Hmm? Hague Stan Craig. Oh. Oh, yeah, it's my old college nickname. You got it, because you did a lot of keg stands. Mm -hmm. This is the thing where you handstand on a keg and drink from the keg. Yeah. Right. He was very good at it. Hmm. Aw, oh, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog and gotta keep my heart rate up. Brought River along, you know? Resistance training. You jog daily? I jog yearly. January 1st, but I promised myself that I'm gonna jog daily for the rest of the year. We give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Oh. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometimes. Uh, I don't know. Hey! Come on, it'd be fun. We could grab some breakfast afterwards, catch up, we could have a bro brunch like the good old days. Alright, sure. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's get that going. Let's get that going soon. I better be moving. Good to see you guys. Craig gives a little wave and puts his earbuds back in and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling. Mm -hmm. Why's that? The Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for every, any living thing, including and especially himself. One time, I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Amanda, he opened a jar of marinara sauce, then he drank it. Like, it was- that was like a normal thing people do. It was unholy. And then I asked him what the hell he was doing, he said, and I quote, It's basically a smoothie, bro. I mean, technically, he's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I have plenty of time to reflect on how old I am, or how old I feel later. Amanda and I flop down onto the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Ah. I bet we're gonna be putting my stuff right back into these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Aw, huh? oh, Dad, it's gonna be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just... You're my little girl. It's gonna be weird not having you around. <laughs> I'll come visit, and I'll text you every day. And I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Oh. Of course. Are you gonna be okay on your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. Yeah. A dog! Hey. Forget art school. I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's gonna take? Hey. A medium-sized dog. Handkerchief around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for me to give up my dreams. I'm a woman that's simple with wants and needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. <laughs> Amanda laughs. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes float, float through the mail slot. Speaking of college, yeah. Amanda darts over to the envelopes, shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest back onto the floor. <laughs> this is from McGowan College of Art and Design. Open it. Hmm. But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Hmm. It's just like my entire future. Not a big deal. Oh. She takes a deep breath and rips open the letter with her teeth. We have a letter opener, but okay. Hmm. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes start back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application and blah blah blah. Um, we. <sighs> her face drops. Regret to inform you that we were unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. Uh. Amanda throws the letter onto the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. Uh. It, it's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't put that um, experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just wanted to see my portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work that you put into your portfolio. The mother school is gonna want to snatch you up for sure. Huh? Yeah, I know, it's fine. Are you actually fine or are you just saying that? Hmm. I'm fine, really. Your face says the opposite. I probably shouldn't push her on this. <laughs> oh, and before I forget, MR and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. Snatch you up as a dodgy brain. 
Oh yeah. Ugh. So... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool? I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Oh, I'll stab you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight. So you'll have the place to yourself. Oh. oh yeah? What are your plans? Quick, think of plans. Alright, what are our plans tonight? Are we gonna secretly... <laughs> I'm secretly the mayor of this town? Okay, I don't think that's true. Gonna attend to the union meeting. Uh, I don't think that's true either, or I'm gonna go clubbing. So, I'm either secretly the mayor of this town, gonna attend the union meeting, or I'm going clubbing. So, uh, yeah. Those are the options. <laughs> secretly the mayor and clubbing. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> The mayor is more realistic. <laughs> Why aren't we the mayor? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Here, I'll just like you need me. I'll just like go like this for like ten seconds without looking love at you. it. Good night, love you. And then whichever one is closer to you, I'll pick that one. Okay. Eeny meeny miny moe, I can't die by a time. If you go, then go. Eeny meeny miny moe. Oh, it's closer to the club. <laughs> And I was completely off the screen. I'm gonna do that one. <laughs> I'm gonna put on a nice outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. All the hottest dance moves. The lawnmower, the sprinkler, the running man. You know, all the ones the kids these days are doing. <laughs> I'm laying on the couch. Welcome, Koba. How's it going? Are you the burb? No. Nah. Hmm. Alright, but I'm not gonna come pick you up if you pull anything this time. Not again. You physically cannot get up. Are you one with the couch? Just kidding. I'm actually going to... Stay at home and finish unpacking. Go to bed or go out and watch the game? Question mark? That's your goodbye message. No. Don't die on us, Koba. Somebody get a doctor. Koba needs resuscitated immediately. Remember me if you always by my nays. My nays. Koba, no! <laughs> Egg eggy and particularly Mexican. Uh... Alright, guys, I need a number. What? Should we do this as numbers? Like top is one, two, and three. Or should we make you type it out? What should we do? Okay, I don't heck one second. I guess I could just run polls, right? Like that's a thing I could be doing. I could be running polls. You want number two? Okay. Anybody else got numbers? Anybody else got numbers? Sorry. <laughs> Get to the hot dance things. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Um. Alright, so am I running the poll? Am I doing it? Am I doing it right? Do you guys see it? Am I stupid? I might be really stupid, actually. But hopefully it's there. Yeah, I think I can do this every time, right? I think I should be able to. Is good, 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 We like it. I, if I have this as a feature, I might as well use it, right? And, uh, I'm gonna grab some tea real quick because reading is actually kind of hurting my voice.
I'm back, hello. Welcome back. I had a poll run. Number two, one. We're going to bed. I'm wet. Have fun with the Emmas. Hey. We'll try to keep it down. I know you're not going to, but I appreciate that you said that. <laughs> Go, I bought that one. <laughs> Don't forget that you have a meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh, right, Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. Awesome. Night, Pops. I put on my pajamas and made myself a nice mug of mint tea to get ready for bed. I can hear Amanda and her friends laughing in her room. I hope they have fun tonight. I'm really glad Amanda had such sweet friends, even if I can never remember their name. Just as I'm heading to my room, the doorbell rings. The kind of cut is locked. <laughs> I can't read the fucking hints because it loads too fast. Who could possibly need anything from me right now? Do they know what time it is? I have pajamas on! I walk over to the door and open it. Hello? Oh. A handsome, clean-cut man stands by my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. Hello? Hi. I know it's kind of late, but I baked way too many cookies, and I can't just have these all in my house, or I'll eat them all! Nice. Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next-door neighbor. Oh yes, hi, I'm Alora. That's what my name is. Hmm. I saw the one moving van and I thought I'd do a neighborly thing and bring you some. My daughter, Christy, wanted me to let you know that she baked them herself. Sophus leans in and whispers. Oh. But between you and me, she just sprinkled the chocolate chips. Uh. <laughs> we both share a laugh. Kids, right? Yeah. Amanda pokes her head out of the room immediately, hones in on the cookies. Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Oh. Yeah. Well, thanks for the cookies. More McDonald's. <laughs> Amanda disappears with the cookies. Oh. Amanda, come back. Uh, and she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a charmer. Ooh. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Ooh. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, they have to be something to be wrong with you to raise more than two. <laughs> I have four kids. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> oh, um, uh, I meant... <laughs> Don't worry. You didn't mean to be rude. Oh no. This is the first neighbor I've met. My social skills and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Uh, yeah, okay. Hey. Is the missus around? Mister, actually. And her... No, not anymore. Oh. He died. Oh. Oh no, the awkward yet me IRL. Yeah. Oh. Uh, mm. I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's alright. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand here quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. Mm. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I looked at Joseph quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge <laughs> smile. Hey, I'm your neighbor Joseph. I promise not to talk about your dead spouse this time, and I'm throwing a barbecue for the call a second. I would love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? Oh. That sounds great. My daughter and Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. <laughs> we shake hands to seal the deal. Yeah. Well, neighbor, I'll let you get to bed. See you at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph starts walking away, but stops to think for a, sec for a second before he turns around. Oh. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If we ever need to talk about stuff... I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. Yeah. You're looking pretty young to me, but suit yourself. And with that, Joseph is gone. You seem nice. 
Amanda walks back into the living room with crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recover I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. See, you're already fitting and giant fitting and great. Where'd those cookies go? Mm. They're gone. I'm sorry. Hey, if it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. You ate them all anyway. <laughs> Emma's helped. Right, well, kiddo, I'm gonna catch some Z's. Hurry, the Z's are getting away! I run down the hall towards my bedroom. I'm hot on the trail. I'll get 12 hours of quadly street. <laughs> Holy fuck, how do I speak? I'm hot on the trail. I'll get 12 hours of quality sleep if this is the last thing that I do. Shut the door behind me. Amanda's laugh echoed through the hallway. Eat a lot of broccoli. I read that one. I wake up to a text from an unknown number. Rise and shine, early bird. Still wanna work out? It's Craig, by the way. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m. Who does 6 a.m. anymore? Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Whoops, must have winked out. I check my phone again. Hey, bud, still wanna get your soul on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. God, the last thing I wanna do right now is work out, but it's Craig. Do I wanna catch up? Oh, there's only two options this time. One second. One second, I'll make a poll. I'm gonna do the thing. New poll. New poll. One. Fuck. We got, we got, we got one, two, and that's, that's the question, and, uh, and, and go. <laughs> we got one or two here. One is go back to sleep, two is go to the gym. gonna go to the gym. Hey, my man, I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing, meet me at the gym. I stretch, my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep on the couch. I throw off my blanket. Hey, wait, I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. God bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes I own that are even kind of gym appropriate and head out. The neighborhood is quiet and serene this early in the morning. Birds chirp and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out front stretching and of course, he spots me and waves enthusiastically. Oh. Hey bro, good morning. Hey, good to see you too, man. I'm definitely not as pumped as he is. Maybe I should have done some coffee before I left. You ready to kick some butt? Oh, we got some more more options. This time there's three of them. Go. Use the poll to vote for the option you want. Gotta stay posy, dude. With your help, I am. Help! Those are your options. Gotta say posy, dude. With your help, I am. And help! <laughs> I like going to the gym. I just don't like other people being at the gym. So when I go to the gym, I like to go to like Planet Fitness at like 2 a.m. when like nobody else is there. I also had like the black card, that way I could like use their water massage bed thing, cause 
Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's great. Especially if you're sore from work. Mm. Number three! Help! <laughs> this is it. This is how I die. Oh, he did not like that. He hated that. Oh, I'll be alright, dude. We'll ease you into it. Hey. We had in the gym and I'm immediately intimidated. All of these people look like they could break me in half, as it seems. Craig is friends with all of them? Oh. He high fives and finger games all the cool jocks in the room. They all look like if they could, they would steal my lunch money to spend it on protein shakes. I don't do gyms, I do DDR at the arcade. <laughs> that sounds fun. Mm -hmm. Come on, bud, let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent pace to be walking. So I know we're on treadmills. Mm -hmm. Yes. And those over there are ellipticals. Mm. Very good. What is all the other stuff? <laughs> Big laughs. Hey! It might look a little scary, but I guarantee you that all of them serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. I watch as a dude in a muscle tee flexes a muscle I didn't know existed on the machine, and I think was once used to process grain into flour. What is that? Why is that guy doing that to himself? Hmm. That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? Oh, we got another thing. Got another question. Training to crush people's skull with his size. Using a medieval torture device. Praying to some sort of pain god. <laughs> kind of like the crushing people's skull. <laughs> oh. Should I vote in my own poll? <laughs> no. No idea? Yeah, we'll see. Number one, let's go. Training to crush people's skull with his thigh. He's uh, he's trying to make his thighs so strong that he could crush people's skull with them. Hey, that's pretty much the only reason to work out. <laughs> oh, he really liked that. There were like eggplants and shit. Oh my god. So so far we've gotten one negative one with him and one really good one with him. Oh no, Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. How, uh, how long have you been doing the buff thing? Mm -hmm. Couple years. And what would you do when you're not dadding or working or buffing? Oh. Oh, I coach my twin softball team. That still counts as both dadding and buffing. Mm -hmm. uh, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? I uh, okay. One second. Let me make that poll again. I need a new poll. We want question mark one. That's not a one, that's a dot. There we go. And our options are I love learning. That's me, to be honest. I try to live my life as I choose a Jimmy Buffett song as possible. That's close. My bad. Right. I love learning. I try to live my life as close to a Jimmy Buffett song as possible. I check out my hot bod. I'd probably go with the first one, for me personally, but for the gameplay, I don't know. I've never heard a Jimmy Buffett song, or if I have, I don't know which songs they are. I don't know, man.
They're basically about living life at your own pace in bars. Oh. Number... Number two one? Number two one? Okay. Number two! The goal is to live with the few worries as I can muster. A lost shark of salt was a metaphor. Wait, that's not shark, that's shaker. The goal is to live with as few mem- Fucking- Oh my god, reading is so hard. Alright, alright, take three. The goal is to live with- <laughs> The goal is to live with as few worries as I can muster. The lost shaker of salt was a metaphor. Hmm. A metaphor about what? About not being able to shake salt onto something. We're jogging now. Oh god, we're jogging now. I look over to Craig, who hasn't even broken a sweat. How is he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying. I can feel my life force straining through every orifice of my body. Hmm. Hey, remember when I fish died in college? Puff. No, I don't like this story. <laughs> oh my god, he really bumped up the speed again. I guess I better do it too. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. And we were at that party, and you vowed to make me feel better. You told me to create a distraction of sort, so I do like a sick keg stand to get everyone cheering. And then I huff, try to steal the fish from a fish tank at the party with my bare hands, like an idiot. Hey. And then you drop the fish and it's flopping around so you panic. So you run up to, the, to me, post keg stand, dying dirty fish in your hands. You scooped off the ground yelling at me. We have to leave. Nice. They were running out of a frat party with a fish, trying to give it mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to get him home into a bowl of water, but the prognosis was grim. The next day, he's uh, alive and well. Hey. They never did catch the great, the great fish thieves of Grand Ridge U. And they never uh, will. I shoot off the end of the treadmill with a crash into the wall. Jesus, that hurts. Yeah. Dude, bro, are you okay? Craig offers me a hand and looks me over for injuries. I am fantastic. I manage to stand up and rub my back. It doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. Oh. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits. Well, I think I might call our gym adventure here. Hmm. You sure? Yeah. Oh. Alright, well, here. I brought you this. Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of green thick liquid. I stare at it with, with me in apparent distaste. It's a protein shake, bro. Oh, thank you. He wants me to drink it. Oh boy, here it goes. I take one small sip. It's actually delicious. Wow, this is really good. Hey. And good for you. It's my special recipe. I'm pretty proud of it. Hey. Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe you can try running around the neighborhood of... <laughs> if treadmills aren't your speed, no pun intended, bro. Good one. I want to put some ice on this. Everything. I'll see you around. I leave the gym feeling ashamed. Craig used to order delivery pizza from across the street of our dorm, and now he can run circles around me. Literally. Man, I really gotta work on this dad bod. I get home and lie on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god, I'm so old. Oh no, I must have all fallen asleep. What time is it? Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be at Manda's school in five minutes. I frantically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. Don't use metal utensils on non-stick pans. I arrive at Amanda's school and check into the front office. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and I'm relieved that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth is around, looks up and down with heavy eyeliner. Sigh. Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? 
Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? Sigh. Fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs where that punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low rent Jared Way was standing, fully ready to give him peace of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? Sigh. Fine, Mr. Vega. Oh. Wow. I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as, I, as he walks away. We're not cool. Oh. You must be a Laura. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Hmm. Mr. Vega leads me in, and I take a seat at the, one of the comically small student desks in the back, and I might get stuck in this. Hmm. Alright, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Stalling's Catcher in the Rye? Hmm. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Hmm? The whole class erupts in laughter. Hmm. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Hmm. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings, and all the students immediately get up and break for the door. Huh? Remember to do the reading. Answer the questions on page one ninety four in your textbook. Nobody is listening. Oh. Or not? I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me in size. Um... Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Eh. Both, you know, budget cuts. All right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Hmm? Please, call me Hugo. Eh. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but I am sure you know Amanda is a very bright student. I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Eh. Amanda's never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk this up to senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. I didn't even cross my mind that something might be wrong. Eh. She wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Ooh, we got another... another... Question Another question for people to vote on the answer is Your options are we just moved, she's fine, she has a tendency to bottle things up. It's probably the third one. The first one might be a gateway into talking about stuff, but Probably the third one. We'll see what people say. Like, don't let me influence your vote. <laughs> Go with whatever you want me to click. Number three! She has a tendency to bottle things up. I haven't noticed anything different about her, but she always tends to put on a happy face no matter what. Hmm? See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road... I don't know. I don't know how important art school is to her, and I'd hate to see her miss out on the scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Hey! Anytime. On my way up, I stop, thinking for a moment, and turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Oh. Yes. Ever catch that rye? Oh. Yes. Oh. You like that? You enjoyed that? Not as much as the sports guys enjoyed the thing at the gym, but you know. 
I leave the classroom. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She always has been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her father. Amanda must be with, done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's been going on. Yeah. I pull up the car to the carpool, and Amanda hops in the passenger side. <laughs> so, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually gossiped about our celebrity crushes. <laughs> you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. Hmm. Pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. We can make something at home, or let's go to the mall food court. So, considering that she said grab some dinner, with this one, I'm just gonna say let's go to the food court. Um, because there's only two choices or whatever. So I'm gonna let, you know, if we're gonna like talk, I'll take I'll take her to the food court. Does that sound good to you? Hmm. Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Can't a dad take his daughter to the mall? Hmm? Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. You would have chosen the food court too? Yeah. Sounds like a deal to me. Uh. We drive in silence. Si we drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have a parent's perspective, because you know, maybe the parent has also had to deal with similar situations. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Mm. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis, all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. Mm. It's fine, he's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I, Amanda, she's texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. <gasps> uh huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she does not want me knowing about it. And that's frustrating. Uh, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Hmm. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. That's so funny. Ah. Uh, it's a. Uh, I don't think you'd get it. Okay. Who you texting? Ah. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Huh. Yep. You like Noah? Ah. What? No. Dad. Uh, can't believe you would. Ugh. Dad. Me cheese. Why would you? Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry. Just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Hmm. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward, turns on the radio. Get that conversation's over. To the mall, then. Please remember to call us once in a while. Oh, that's sad! Oh no, tip number three, remember to call your dad once in a while. <laughs> we arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. Kinda dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Yes! Hell yeah. Language, Missy. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah! Better. Hmm. We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There is a greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar? Bread with cheese on it? Or do you just want me to inject some fat 
directly into the bloodstream. I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? Ah. She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. Huh? These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely delicious. Hmm. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So, yeah. something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Hmm. Sigh. Which meme? All. All memes. Oh. Martha's eyes deeply and places her head in her hands. Ugh. That is complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that gets less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all of us youths have already done the joke to death. Aww. And what's worse than that is that movies and TVs and video games will try to jump in on a meme train, but just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out, so it just dates it and it's not funny. Oh shit, what up? Alright, that boy will live on forever throughout history. So, you know what? <laughs> Fuck you. <sighs> oh, dad, please. Hmm. Anyway, changing the subject. Where'd you know? Wanna go to that goth store? Hmm. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti establishment despite being exact representation of the establishment. I I don't know what story you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy a chain wallet is basically an assault on what people have fought so hard against in the punk hardcore movement since the 70s and 80s. Mm. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. Oh, that one! Yes! Emma runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. Hey! There it is! You can still see the outline, kind of. So proud speech Amanda Speech 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 Alright I'll do it if you stop chanting. Ah and it stops immediately. I clear my throat. <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate a historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Doodles had too much blue raspberry slurpee or slushy on an outing in the mall. After begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond <laughs> to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains along our possessions. Thank you. Ah. Amanda is moved. She begins clapping, slow at first, then faster and more vigorous. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow. <laughs> hey, chain wallets! While Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest myself. Not too much for a dad to look at a dead goth and beyond. Ooh, we get choices again! Time to make another poll! Another poll for the choices, for the chat, for the random lurkers, if anyone else wants to vote. And the options are... Pursue the band t-shirts. Look at ironic mugs. Check the clearance bin for hot deals. So which one do you want to do? Whenever I go to Hot Topic, or Dead Goth and Beyond, whatever the fuck this is, I, uh... I usually look at the weird shit. <laughs> um, so I guess it's kind of like the clearance bin. You know, you look at the shirts too. Oh, do you think the weird shit's more like the mugs or the clearance bin? I don't know. Choose whatever you choose.
Number two, look at the ironic mugs. Suddenly, I'm stric stricken by existential fear. What if there's only number one dad? Then why are there so many mugs in here that say that? This whole time, I thought I was the only one. If I'm not number one, where do I place on the global dad ranking charts? I have work to do. Look, this is very important to me. Over here, a stifled argument over a cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment, showing it to the bored looking cashier with pink hair. I like this one. I like this, like, vampire aesthetic. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Oh my! Listen, when I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. You want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. I see. Well, it would seem that I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Whatever, dude. The man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails training, trailing behind him. I can't tell if they're Victorian inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Oh. Hey, Dad, drawn 5,000. Yes, I'll buy it for you. <laughs> wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda pops the t-shirt under the counter and grins at the cashier. Huh. I love your hair. <laughs> the cashier says nothing and rings up Amanda. Radiating hatred, I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? And she rolls her eyes so hard I'm worried she'll pull something. That's Damien. Ooh, Damien. He's in here all the time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag, and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way to the store. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Amanda and I sit on the couch trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh cool. Long haul. Paranormal ice road. Ghost Truckers is on. Your favorite, right? Oh hell yeah. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before ice road melts, but they also are ghost hunting. Hmm. Also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Calm and Flint Dogbone are twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo that find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no! The ghost done got control of the truck! I can't steer them there! All the damn ice roads! Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die! Uh, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like they're saying, You're gonna die. Mm. That's because we are about to die, you! <laughs> this is art. The episode ends, and Amanda excuses herself and goes to start an argument on the internet. I stay up a little bit longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint, Dogbone, after the disastrous ice road incident. Afterward, I crawl into bed, get a good night's sleep. It's okay to cry if you're feeling sad. Good tip. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never, ever let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. We have steel for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We were able to put together a few shelves, one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. Are so you excited for the cookout today? Ooh, we get some more choices for chat. Are you ready, chat? New poll. One, two, and three. Go.
and can I read the options? Excited to beef up my grilling skills. If there's food, I'm excited. And eh, eh. <laughs> Does this dad grill or what? <laughs> Number two, if there's food, I'm excited. I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies that everyone brings to parties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are bad. Which means there are more for me. Mm -hmm. I want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Huh. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. Whoa. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early, just because you said that. I got out of the door. Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. I have to get going, take care of pets, thank for the nice stream, sweetheart. Yeah, I don't know how much longer I'm gonna stream anyway. Probably just like a couple hours. I don't know. Hope you have a good night. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people. The smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler, and adults chat in small clusters. I set our veggie plate down on the table next to two other veggie plates, huh? Hey, there's Joseph! Thank you, Michi. I love you. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. <laughs> Welcome! I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies! Mm. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Hi. Hi, Chris. <laughs> this is Christian and Christy. They're twins. Whoa! They deep stare creepily and say nothing. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Well, where's Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh. Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Hmm. Josh pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Oh, Mary, sweetheart. Did you put Krish to bed? Hmm. I have to go look for him. Oh. What? You have to? <laughs> Just it takes a moment to regain his composure. <laughs> hey, this is our new neighbor, Alora, and his daughter, Amanda. I shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Oh yeah, I clicked the like YouTube content creator safety thing. I think it removed her glass of wine. <laughs> so weird. Nice to meet you, Mary. Charmed. Well, I have to get over there now. Eat up. <laughs> My wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two, enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Here, let me introduce you around. Oh. This is Robert. He lives just across the way. A haggard man nursing a glass of whiskey eyes me up and down. See, no, the whiskey glass is here. Why is the wine glass gone? Whatever. So, Robert was the man that was eyeing us across the coffee shop. Hey. Hey, I'm Alora. Nice to meet you. He takes a long swig off his drink. Charmed. Huh? Laura and his daughter just moved in next door. Cool. 
you ever need recommendations on where to get a drink in the town, Rob's your man. Mm. I told you not to call me Rob. Oh. Right, got it. Robert ambles away without saying goodbye. Hey. He's not really a people person. Wow, I think I've actually met everybody else. Yeah. Great, I bet you're excited to get to know everyone better. Hope you both enjoy yourselves. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick up some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. Ugh. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Hmm. Dad. Ugh, we're going to talk about the weather. Ugh. Go. Do it. Make a friend. But how can I possibly abandon my only child of social function? That's bad parenting. <laughs> this plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye! Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Yeah, it is! Look at him! Mm -hmm. What a cool guy in a mysterious... He looks like he might be fun, but probably only for one night. And didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? He's probably the safest option for long-term stuff, but I don't think I like his personality. Isn't the guy who was throwing a fit at the dead Gotham Beyond? I like his artistic style. I could see me drawing him like a French girl. And isn't that Amanda's teacher? Another hottie? And this one is smart. And hey, I know Craig. I think, I think Craig's recent breakup and the kids and stuff might put a damper on things. But wait a second, all these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I better investigate. Ooh, we got four options here. I'm gonna set up a poll for four options. I'm gonna run this poll for two minutes and I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'll be back. I would prefer if anybody and everybody voted by the way. <laughs> Even if you're lurking, I won't ask what your name is. And if nobody votes, then I get to choose. Nobody voted. Alright. Um, if we want to talk to Robert, we have to also talk to Brian. Uh, I think I think we'll talk to Joseph and Damien. I want to talk to Damien. I spot Joseph chatting with the guy from Dead Goth and Beyond by the grill. 
wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. Mm. I'm so curious. Can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Mm. Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood. It complements the crimson interior perfectly. <sighs> it's definitely an interesting choice. Oh! Thank you. I'm very proud of my abode. Oh. Laura, I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical eye. Hmm. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I think I saw you at Dead Goth and Beyond the other day. Hmm. Damien's face turned bright red. I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take goth lifestyle very serious. And to be caught in a ruse by such corporations such as Dead Goth and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was such a way for a gentleman to act. It's okay, man. Hmm. You tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Goth and Beyond. Uh. Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the goth lifestyle? I think for a second I look over to Amanda who's hanging out with some older kids in the neighborhood. What? Hey Amanda, would you consider yourself goth? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under any one specific label, but if I had to guess that she was more describe myself as twee hipster with some normcore leaning. <laughs> That's her cool though. Hmm. Uh, pity. Hmm. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. Yeah. Amanda walks up to the conversation. Ah. I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as goth? Hmm. <laughs> that it would, my dear. I don't believe we have the pleasure of meeting. Damien Bloodmark at your service. Or Bloodmarch. Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose, offering it to Amanda. Oh. Amanda blushes, returning the gesture with a curtsy. <laughs> My, do you know how to treat a lady? What? Hello, Amanda. Because they speak in unison at the same time, because they're freaks. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twin kids appear. They are, uh, speaking in unison. What? H hey. Won't you come play with us? Hmm. Uh. Come play with us forever. Oh. Guys, enough with the creepy twin stick. We've talked about this. Yeah. Christian and Christy slowly back away. Where do you think they got that from? <sighs> Mary pops into the conversation, wine in hand. Hey, the wine glass is actually here this time. Yeah. I, uh, don't know. Mary takes a long sip of wine. I think it might have taped over vegetables. Veggie Tales VHS with the shining. Who knows? Takes another sip of her wine. Hmm. Where's Krish? Ugh. Wasn't he with you? Ugh, okay. You uh, had him a moment ago. <sighs> Probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be alright. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass to me. Ah. Ain't my first time to the rodeo. It's my fourth. Ugh. I have squeezed four, little uh. sweetheart. Would you just do me a favor and find Krish? That'd be great. Hmm. I'm sure he's fine. Ugh, okay. Mary, hmm. Okay, jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go now? Hmm. Ah, oh, Lucian. I've in have I introduced you to Alora yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. Mr. Christiansen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? Coming right up, bud. Are you a vegetarian? Yep. Hmm. 
Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians? They described carnivorous type people as blood lepers. Yeah. That's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns on the grill, with a hint of tattoo peeking out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. Whoa, is that a tattoo? Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. That's so cool. Wanna see mine? What? What? Lucian pulls back his upper rubber bracelet, revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian. We'll talk about this later. Yeah. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Uh. Oh, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful, though. That number carries weight. Man, Joseph is way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastor popped out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. Alrighty. Um, where should we go with next, huh? Let's, uh, talk to Robert and Brian, because I want to talk to Robert. I glance across the yard and notice Robert and Brian chatting over drinks. Man, I don't think I want to deal with being one ups by Brian right now, but I guess I could live with learning more about Robert. Oh no, they caught me staring. Oh no! Brian's waving me over! Shoot. I flash a smile as I walk over to them. Hey, guys! Hey. Laura, how the heck are ya? Setting into the neighborhood alright? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. Ah. That's great to hear! I've been doing some living room work as well. Finishing the 50 in inch in there. Game looks great in high def. Oh boy. Laura, have you met Robert yet? Yeah, we've met. Robert regards me over his whiskey. Good seeing you again. Oh. We're just talking about our most recent champion camping. Ch what the fuck? We were just talking about our my most recent camping trip. Spent a night on the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. Even caught her first fish. <laughs> it's good to see you taking your daughter out like that. I bet she loved it. Hey. And it's great that she loves the outdoors. One loves being inside. Brian raised an eyebrow at me. Being inside, making art. She won a local competition for art. Yep. Mm -hmm. Did I put it on too strongly? Robert stares at me blankly for a second. Oh. Anyway, uh -huh. I haven't gone camping in years. Not since last time. Same here. Well, things can change if you have... Wait, what happened with last time? Hey. Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Well, old Johnny Boy and me were out in the backyard, back country. Johnny Boy's a strong kid. Met him in my army days. Comes from Kansas. They build him tougher out there. Anyway, things go south pretty quick. Johnny Boy breaks his ankle when the rope bridge snaps. <sighs> You can see the bone pop through the skin. Johnny Boy's screaming now, crying for his mama, losing blood. We're two days out from the next living soul, and here I am with my dear friend bleeding out in front of me. I'm able to dress the wound, but now I got a fireman carry a six foot, 180 pound man over some of the toughest terrain I've ever been in. <sighs> I won't lie to you, there were some moments during those two days when I thought about leaving old Johnny boy, but you build a bond with your brothers in arms and that bond never breaks. I got that boy back to civilization, but I lost some of me out there. Mm. I guess that's camping for you. Ryan and I stare in disbelief. Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Hey. I'm just kidding. My friend John and I went in here tubing down a river, and he lost a foot. <laughs> Miss the kid. <laughs> hey. Brian and I laugh nervously. Uh, Where am I kidding? Well, Brian and I tense up hey. again. I'm kidding. Uh, <sighs> hey. 
A man and Daisy barrel up to us, laughing. Daisy's holding a paper plate in front of her like a steering wheel. We gotta get off! This truck is haunted! Oh no! The ghosts locked the doors! Yeah. Quick, hit the emergency escape button! But trucks don't have emergency escape button! Aww. Uh, then hit the brakes, I guess, and we'll just get out of the truck! Oh. The imaginary truck! Yeah. Anyway, we're safe from the ghosts, but how will we ever survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. Huh. That's cold-blooded. I like it. Although, I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. Mm. You know, that reminds me of the last time I went skiing. Robert! Yeah. <laughs> Wait a sec, are you guys playing Long Haul Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Truckers? Yeah. Amanda and I love that show. It's the best, especially the episode where Callum and Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn, sending the spirit after him. Yeah, such quality television. I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I do enjoy that show. That and war documentaries. <laughs> Alright, Daisy. Found us a couple of bugs. They're gonna do a great meal, lots of protein. Gotta keep from starving out there in this harsh, icy wasteland. There's a whole t table of food right over there. Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Huh. Live a little. Mena gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table to eat them with mock disgust. Let's go find kindling for a fire. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but not an actual fire. Since we're playing pretend. All right. Now you're getting it. <laughs> Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I guess Amanda just sort of has a way with kids. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her own age. Hmm. Nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? <laughs> she kinda keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends every recess in the library. I think other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. There it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bit people too. Uh -huh. Oh ho ho, kids, right? Gotta love them. You're required to. By law. I hear that. Uh -huh. Well. Since we're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for him. I do seem to get along really well, but the thought of continually hearing all about Brian's accomplishments is rough. Yeah, that'd be nice. Ah. Well, don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. Alright, time to go talk to Hugo and them. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Greg looks on the smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods of art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of the time and place, and to try and take something like, say, the Rococo period and compare it to the postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which the work of art was created. I agree with that statement, by the way. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking they don't even notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Oh, god damn. See, ah, fuck, dude. I would rather go with Matt or Hugo than Craig, to be honest. Craig's cool and all, and if you like your sporty dads, good on you, but I prefer the artsy smartsy type. Um. That kind of comparison just eliminates. The reason for the art movements are so important in the first place. Mm. You're not wrong, but I think there's no harm comparing one work of art to another. You could definitely say one painting is better than if you're evaluating technical skill from a purely formalist standpoint. If I showed you a, a Matsi and then something by the Dutch masters, which would you say shows more technical prowess? Mm. I'm so lost right now. Shoot. Worried glance over to Craig, who returns it. <sighs> 
Well, sure, you could say that the Dutch masters were technically more skilled, but I would argue that while the Dutch masters were better painters, the Matsi had better painting overall. Well, that's pretty subjective. Hmm. What do you mean? Uh, well, that painting of the guy with the apple in front of his face is pretty nice. Matsi rocks. Hmm. That's a Margate. Right, alright, sorry. You're fine, dude. Ah. We're just discussing the importance of context when talking about artwork. Listen, all I ask is if you liked Van Gogh or Picasso oh. better. You could throw up the sands in frustration. But they represent two completely different movements. How could I possibly choose between the thick, creamy impasto of post-impressionalism or the abstract, genus beauty of cubism? Man, that's way above my head. Oh. Me too. Hey, yeah. No, it's all good, man. The cool thing about art is that we all perceive it differently. A single piece could have a totally different effect on each person that looks at it, and that's what's awesome. Hmm? Just one minute about that. Here you go, please. Hmm. Sorry, sorry, I got really fired up about art stuff. Laura, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everything's been super friendly. Hey, yeah. Uh... Seems like your daughter's fitting in just fine. That points across the yard where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting crisscross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them to little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. Hey. What is it, sweetheart? Yo, Matt's daughter looks cool! Yo, we lived for that. She looks adorable as fuck. It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Hey. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes a flower crown and places it on top of his head. Hey. Am I cool now? Heck yeah. Heck yeah, you are. The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mm, nope. But you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Oh. Hey, Laura, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmenstia. <laughs> Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop? And my old college friend and, uh, your teacher? Hey! Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Yes! Yep. You still gotta get me the overdue term paper? Ugh. Ah, good seeing you! Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. You learned the finger guns move from me. Very proud. Oh. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? What? Hugo looks around the party. He finally spotted him, because his eyes go wide. Sweet man, Chase. Ernest, Ernest Hemingway Vega, are you smoking? Hmm. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He actually takes a long drag off his cigarette and then flicks it into the gutter. Hmm. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest, and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Hey, yeah. Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants, nearly burned down half the yard. Oh. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread onto my lawn, and burned down half of my yard, too. <laughs> Hmm. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Hmm. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that, Alora. This is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, skulking, his hands shoved deep inside his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Hmm? Ernest. Okay, I'm in the eighth grade. God, you happy now? I'm sure, you're just dying to know. Er, yeah, good for you. Oh. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Ouch. <sighs> Ernest. Oh, yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts his earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was... that was uh, certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. Hmm? I'm sorry. He's having a really rough time. 
as much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad. And he clearly resents me for it. Nice. I mean, you think as a dad in the future, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Mm. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? But I'm a cool as a cucumber. Hey, yeah. See, that's right there. You can't say that. I don't know. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be cool dads? Oh. I, uh, I don't know. Hey. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we become the machine that we once raged against. And accept our fate to unironically wear socks and sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18, and she still thinks I'm cool. Mm -hmm. I yell across the road to my daughter. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. Um... As much as we all want it, I don't think it's important to be as cool a dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me and Ernest. Ah. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Mm. Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways. Me and these guys talk about it makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well. There might come a time when it won't be like that. College when that happens? Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't let us eat up your time, Oler. Go meet some other people around the neighborhood. <laughs> And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work with the greatest of ease as he sets patties on the grill. Flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air, it's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. Oh. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese on the patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side, one after another. The dads take notice in the crowd around Joseph to admire his beautiful technique. Oh. I'm sorry if you can hear Airy raging in the background. <laughs> you probably didn't know this, Alora, but Joseph known around here for his grillmanship. He's unbelievable. 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 <laughs> Dude! I've tried to get on this level, but I just can't catch up. Hey. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. Yeah. <laughs> Mustard, we keep talking about this. Can't we just appreciate the artist? I... I've never seen him make a mistake. Hey! Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. Mm. Please stop. All the children at the party boo in the glorious display of puns in unison. <laughs> Alright guys, food is ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying the perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Yeah. Man, it's so wild how all the dads live here in the same cul-de-sac. Hey. Kinda nice, isn't it? Feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Hmm. We're happy to have you, man. I think you're gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Hmm? Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the other kids. If she decides to get into babysitting games, she'll make a killing. <laughs> hey, why don't you add us on Dad Book? <laughs> dad Book? <laughs> dad Book? Oh. Yeah, it's a great social networking for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it. But if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Huh. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. <laughs> Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. As we change trade stories on a drink beer, our kids play in the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between... Carmenstia and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Ah. Pretty fun party, don't you think? Mmm. I mean, I got a burger in me. I felt like it was a networking event. 
Uh, that one. I'm gonna get LinkedIn notifications out of this, I just know it. <laughs> you don't think it's nice that people want to connect with you? Not when their affection jams up my inbox, metaphorically speaking. Hmm. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dadbook. Maybe I will, if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Practice makes hmm. permanent. Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm. Seems like was nobody was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans for this evening? <laughs> Actually, yeah. I'm going out with some friends. Oh. Hmm. Is that okay? Of course. Just keep me posted and be home before midnight. Hmm. You got it. And be careful. I will. Make good choices. Eh? Of course. And call me if you need anything. Ah. Dad, you're not gonna do the thing where you wait silently for you to come home in the middle of the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No, I've never done that, and I will never do that. Hmm. Okay, do you have any plans tonight? I, uh... My plans were kinda eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something else to do. I'm gonna... Uh... Throw a party! A real rager! All the other dads in the neighborhood invited to just see if you can get a spot on the list. <laughs> Another guy at the door. I'll get in no problem. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Yeah. Great. See you later. Watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with chef celebrity Gavin Champman. Look like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. I'd love to be able to cook like that, although I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil, like making baked Alaskas all day instead of food for real nutrition. Man, Gavin Chapman just thought caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind and also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was about. It was just a lot of yelling. At a glance at my watch, man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey kiddo, you good? I wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home. In which case, I hope she doesn't respond soon. Because I definitely taught her better to be than text and drive. I reach into the freezer, grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. I check my watch again. In my home phone. Nothing else. Okay, see, now I'm worried. Did I call her? Did I call the cops? No, no, no. That's too stupid for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. Now I'm extremely worried. This episode of Gavin Chapman, Meet Hell, not only... Not a su- a su- What the fuck word is that? A surging. A surging. Uh. Uh. <laughs> this episode of Gavin Chapman's Meet hell are not only not soothing my anxiety but possibly exasperating it with all the yelling so i keep pacing around the house waiting for her to come back why didn't i find out where she was going who was she even with why did i not know any of her friends phone numbers why don't i even know her friends full names who is emma p i decided to send her an extra text and amanda please text me back and let me know that you're okay can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh, thank God, it's her. She opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, she's home. What's up? Sweetie, thank God you're safe. <sighs> uh, yep. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't she answer my texts? I made her pull her phone out of her pocket. Ah. Oh, oops, I guess I didn't see those. So let's walk to her bedroom. Amanda Ann? Mm -hmm. Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now? 
You came home an hour and a half after the curfew, and you didn't respond to my text. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go to school, are you? Oh, God. I don't want to go with the whole I don't like your attitude thing. I think that's kind of crappy. Uh... I guess I'll go with I was scared. You weren't responding, and it was just it was just like when your dad. I have to stop myself from tearing up. <gasps> oh, Dad, I didn't mean to. I sit down on the couch. Oh my God, do you hear Eerie laughing? And put the head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just don't do that again. Oh. Oh. All right, I'm gonna go to bed now. I'm gonna close the door to her room, and I had to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not gonna be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. Uh. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey, uh. I thought about what you said last night. Hmm. I should have texted you. I said I was gonna do it, I didn't. Honestly, I didn't even think about uh. it. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. Well? I trust you to make two good choices. I also thought about it, and I'll try to give you more space from here on out. I gotta trust that you can take care of yourself. Hmm. Team Doodles. Team Doodles. Huh. Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? Huh. You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them. Already did. Huh. Bless you. Amanda scarfs down the eggs, and then the time it takes to wash the pan. Alright, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go. Mm. What? What's dad book? Ugh. It's a social media platform. Wait, mm. what? What's a social media platform? <laughs> dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put together a daddy book profile on my own. Mm. Alright, I'll help you. Help you make some interesting on the internet. Dad. Amanda spends the next couple minutes setting up a profile on Dadbook, which, as it turns out, is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. Ah. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Alright, Pops, we gotta fill out your profile. Let's make some likes and dislikes. Ooh, here we go. On a Friday night, you are most likely to... Polish and sort my coin collection. Netflix and grill, baby. Fall asleep watching the History Channel, torment my children with dad puns, sink into blissful oblivion. Alright, so Friday night. Um... Gosh. Uh... Uh... Let's Netflix and grill. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? Um... <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh god. A boat, obviously. No. Oh god, dude. Um The Lost Shaker of Salt. Alright, so clearly right, this is like for Joseph. This one's for Matt. I uh I feel like this one is probably for the redhead dude, Brian. This one's for Robert. I'm not sure who this one's for. So we'll do that one. What are your turn ons? Oh my god. Strong tan arms. Tennis shoes. Long white socks. A well manicured lawn. Street smarts. Top tier grillmanship. Comfortable with crying. You know, yeah, we'll do that. What did you want to be when you grew up? Technical writer for manuals and instructions, a salty boat captain, a pro skater who's also an astronaut, a good father, the president of space. 
Um. <laughs> God. Uh. I guess it's a good father. What's your favorite movie genre? War documentaries, Sean Connery's entire filmography, anything on Laserdisc, romantic comedies, whatever will make me cry. Old comedies I have an age Honestly, the cry one probably. <laughs> What's your ideal date? Um, napping together, doing a thousand piece puzzle, eating a healthy dinner at 4 p.m., trying to geocache but getting hopelessly lost hours. <laughs> Being emotionally vulnerable. Oh my god. That's funny. Um. <laughs> ah, I mean, a thousand piece puzzle is cool. Napping's also cool. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I kinda wanna do the emotionally vulnerable one. Just because I think, uh. Maybe, maybe it'll, it'll <laughs> What do you never leave home without? A sensible cardigan, my sick vape, a book of word jumbles on a pen, a cool knife, my cripplingly low self-esteem. I frequently forget my phone keys in a lot of home sometimes. I'm gonna go with the knife, I always have a knife. I spent a long time thinking about conspiracy theories, how proud I am of my child, potential ends the world, if I'll ever be able to love myself as I love my girl, <laughs> when I can get a next cup of coffee, lawn more modifications, um, I'll go potential ends of the world. Yeah. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day in here just looking at people's profiles. Yeah! Yeah, you should message one of them, or more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay. I promise I'll make some friends. <laughs> Amanda gives me a hug. Go get him, Dan. Welcome! You've got dads! Whoa! We've got dads! What's this? Hi, Laura. It's me, your dear old friend from way back in the day. I'm Dad Manda. I'm delighted to see you've signed up for Dadbook. They've recently added this exciting new messenger service, so you may find yourself receiving messages from other dads like myself. Take care not to miss them. Amanda, <laughs> what is it that you're doing on Dadbook? Why, Alora, I never. We've known each other since our business school. How could you possibly confuse me for your amazing, talented, and easy to buy things for daughter? Though I am, of course, flattered. You should buy Amanda more things. Amanda, you know I don't go to business school. I barely even managed to get my degree. Wait. No. Wow. I didn't say that. <laughs> You never heard that. This is gold. I was a great student, I swear. I graduated at the top of my class. I worked hard and ate all my vegetables. Totally holding on to this for later. Wait, do you even remember what I majored in? I declined to comment. Cool. Nice, nice. Conversation ended. Can we save it? Dave. Yeah, I think this is where we're gonna leave off for part one. Um, we've joined Dad Book. Next, I'm pretty sure we get to like choose different dads and talk to them and maybe even like try to date them. We just got through like the main intro. Thanks for people that joined the chat tonight, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Like two.